Hi, it's Jane Adsed Grant. Watch my exclusive interview now with Mandy Griffiths, who is an expert image consultant, helping people get confident in what they wear and how to create the impact that they want for themselves. It all started for me probably about 15 years ago. I think when Trini and Susanna first came on board, I used to be besotted with it, watched everything, and thought, I want to have that done, don't know where to start, Googled image consultants, had my colours, image, <clears throat> everything done, and then realised the impact it had on me. And then as soon as I was able and the career time was right, made a shift, went into this as a business and haven't looked back since really. Oh. My um, background's HR and training. So um, within an HR department, but headed up large training functions. So this job really kind of goes in hand in hand with that. What this does is about understanding who you are how you want to be and create, creating the impact that you want to have. So understanding who you are and how to make that work and play for you. With work, I think the most professional and successful people are confident. They're confident in their ability and they're confident in how they look. And research suggests that actually people's um, confidence levels directly affect how successful they are. So people buy into your look before they buy into your abilities. If you look like you can do it, chances are people assume you can. If you're wearing the right colours, you are going to look healthy and well. And people don't tend to employ people who look a bit poorly. They don't realise they're doing it, but it's kind of, oh, I'm not sure about that. So the minute you look healthy and well, better things are going to happen for you. And that comes through colour. If you're wearing the right colour makeup, having the right colour hair, wearing the right colour clothing. So that's always your number one. The second thing is having the confidence to know what suits your body shape. And that isn't about what's fashionable, it's about what your body wants you to do. Um, and that's going to come from, are you curvy, are you straight lines, following what fits your body, and if you're comfortable in something. If you're constantly fidgeting in a shirt, because it's gaping here, and it's baggy there, and it's collar's too high, you're never going to look right when you're fidgeting. So it has to be the right colour, it has to be the right shape for you. It also has to suit your personal personality. So there are people that are classic and grown up and very Margot from The Good Life. There are Barbaras from The Good Life, the little cheeky ones who kind of want to be outdoorsy. We've got our rock chicks. So it's a real mix, we've got our girly girls. So it's about understanding how you express your personality through your clothing. And if you're in a group of women and a group of friends and you think, oh, I kind of need to look like they do, which is very much um, a female thing that we do, isn't always helpful because you just might be the glamorous one, you might be the pixie, you might be the sexy one, you might be the rock chick, you might be the grungy one, it doesn't matter as long as you're true to yourself. And the last part of the puzzle is always being appropriate to the situation because there's no good being a rock chick and looking like a rock chick if actually you work in a bank in London. <laughs> <laughs> That's not ever going to be quite appropriate. So it's about getting the mix of those right, understanding who you are and expressing what you want to express. Um, and you often find that people's style um, changes drastically once they leave a job and go to a new employer or when they retire, suddenly they shed this skin and go, I'm not that person anymore, I'm a new person, and finding out who that is. It sounds hugely complicated and a big thing, but actually this come, it's, it's just a learned behaviour. It's just an understanding, a learning, going, right, those are the colours I wear, those are the ones I don't. So we're not talking masses of learning and it's going to take you decades. This is something that the stars do very well. The stars and the, you know, the gorgeous people on TV look good because they make the most of every single little thing. And that's something that we don't do as ordinary people. We might have one of it right, spend a load of money on our hair, but that's no good if the face makeup's wrong. So it's just about getting all your little ducks in a row and going, do you know what? I look a lot better for that. So if you think about um, what's the most attractive quality in a person, if you look at the polls when they do you know, surveys, both men and women will always say it's confidence. If they see a confident person, they think that's really attractive. And if you go out and you know you look good, you look healthy, everything suits you, everything's working for you, you're gonna have that confidence. And the minute you have that, you are immediately attractive. It's not about age, it's not about the size you are, the weight you are, the height you are. It's about being the best version of you that gives you confidence and therefore attractiveness and therefore everything good that comes off of the back of that. I think with men, probably about 10% of my clients are men. Um, and it's interesting how men and women come to me for different reasons. 
Men, it tends to be career. I want to get my career sorted. I want to know exactly what to wear, how to look the part, how to look healthy and well. They don't usually have the benefit of makeup and you know more things to do with their hair and jewellery. So they've kind of got a suit, a shirt and a tie and they kind of want to make sure that's making them look right. Um, so yeah, we have about 10% of clients are men um, and they're a different type of client. They tend to go, yep, yeah, give me the advice, I'll go away and do it. Like everything, if you want to understand something, you need to take advice. If you don't know it, take advice. And I think the issue that women have is that we have advice from so many different places. You know, if you're of my generation, you had Jackie magazine as a kid and a teenager, and we, we read everything and go, oh, right, we're going to do that. But it's generic. And if you look at fashion, it's generic. If you're fashionable, you'll be wearing this. But that isn't necessarily right for our colouring, for our style, for the appropriateness of who we are and where we live and what our situation is. So the advice we receive is so wide, and you need to personalise it. It's like saying everyone can wear, everyone should have a white shirt. Yes, if you're a winter and white suits you, you're going to look amazing in it. But that's not for everybody. How to do a smoky eye isn't for everybody. So we need to take all the advice and have a, a wide view, but then we need to tailor it into who we are. So you take segments of trends and different bits that apply to you to make yourself look youthful well. But I think that's where people get confused because there is so much contradictory advice out there. Which if you, you, know, if you think about it, it stands to reason. Because they're trying to, you know, billions of people are trying to fit into this and you can't do that. So you have to always bring it back to who you are and get personal advice for you. Personal opinion, um, invest a little bit of money. It's not a huge amount of money. Um, colour analysis is £100 per person. That gives you half a day, two, two and a half hours of learning, trying everything on. There's no point just having theoretical learning. You also have to have the experiential learning. So me saying, here's a bunch of colours, off you go, doesn't mean anything to people. You need to experience it, practice it, and understand how colours mix and match. I've got turquoise, royal blue, pink on, sparkly shoes, you know, all sorts of things going on, but it works, so it's all in one big happy family. So that always has to be your first point of call. So colour analysis needs to come first. There's no point wearing a beautiful outfit that makes you look ill. Yeah, that's not going to do you any favours. So get the colour right first. Then, probably two, three months later is the ideal. Get your head around all of that. Don't spend any more money. You don't want to be spending any more bad money. You want to get all the learning done first. Then come along for Style and Image Day, which looks at the theory of clothing, the history of clothing, your body shape, so what works for you, where are your big bits, where are your small bits, where are your long bits, where are your short bits, so that you understand how to dress the body that you've got. Being um, thinner or fatter or bigger or smaller makes no different. Your fundamental body shape is always the same. It's just a bigger or a smaller version of the same thing. If you're hourglass now, you're always going to be hourglass. So it's about understanding that. Um, that's your second phase, that's £125, again, for about half a day of learning. Then we set you off again so that you can get your head around that. Then it's just making sure you've got the right makeup on, the right hairstyle for you, and you are good to go. If there's any way that you can do this at a period of time that is important to you, so the beginning of the year is a great time to do this. You make a New Year's resolution, this is the year that I'm going to look better. And you often find that once clients have been to me, they will say things like, I look better now than I did 20 years ago.